Hi everyone, I'm Deanna, welcome back to my channel, you're watching Orky D. Today, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about cat litters, um, and I wanted to discuss their growth habit a little bit. Um, I won't go too much into culture today, um, I'm planning to make another video about how I keep cat layers um, in the future. Uh, so today we'll just talk a little bit about their background um, and take a look at a few in my collection that have growths developing at the moment. So cat layers are a South and Central American orchid um, which were first discovered in the early 1800s in Brazil. They were first grown and flowered in cultivation by a guy named William Catley, um, hence the name cat layer of the genus. Um, and it's got these large fragrant blooms um, that were very popular in the 1950s as the traditional corsage orchid. Um, and its popularity has probably been overridden these days by the very popular Phalaenopsis orchid, but it does still remain quite a mainstay in most collections. Now you can see I've got this Lelia purpurata that's just coming into bloom and it's got a very nice lip but it's a bit curled up there. I hope it opens up a bit more. But we'll see. So in nature there are around 60 cat layer species. Um, but many, many hybrids have been cultivated. Um, and then they can also be crossed with other genera in the Cattleya Alliance, like Encyclias and Brassivolas, which then create an endless number of intergenerics with a wide variety of shapes, sizes, different colors. Cattleyas are sympodial orchids, which means they create multiple pseudobulbs um, off a central rhizome, which is this long connecting structure here. Every growth cycle, it'll produce one or more new pseudobulbs from which new blooms can potentially come, but each pseudobulb will only bloom once. After this, they serve as vessels for nutrient storage and their leaves are used for photosynthesis. Now with time, as the new bulbs and canes form, the old canes will eventually lose their old leaves but the pseudobulbs can still remain and as long as they're green, they can still serve as nutrient tanks almost. Um, and this can fuel further new growths via the rhizome, or it can also be a little bit of energy stores for periods of drought. As the pseudobulbs mature, many cat layers produce sheaths. You can see young sheaths there and you can see a larger sheath developing there um, but some cat layers will actually flower without a sheath directly from the apex of the pseudobulb now the ones with sheaths may develop their buds straight away as soon as the cane is mature um, but some of them will have a little rest and this is often during the winter period um, and it may take a little while for them to start developing buds and some of them will actually take a rest over winter and start developing their buds over spring. Now as the buds begin to develop um, you'll actually notice that the sheath starts to swell and if you press gently you might be able to feel that there is a little bit of a bulge in there otherwise you can actually shine a little bit of a light to create a silhouette so then as the bulbs develop they will actually burst through the tip of this sheath sometimes they do need a little bit of help um, not often um, but especially in a in a plant that's um, a little bit you know, uh, stressed, it may not have enough strength to burst through the sheath and you might need to give the sheath a little bit of a cut, but for all intents and purposes, it provides a bit of a protective barrier against the elements um, to help those, those buds develop safely. And that's actually my favorite part when those buds burst through the sheath. I just love waiting for that moment. And then the flowers usually open shortly after this. Once these blooms fade, you can just cut off the flower from above the cane there. 
um, and then what you'll be looking for is new growths developing from the base of the pseudobulbs. So I've got a good um, range of examples here of the different stages of the Micturin canes. So first you'll get a little nubbin, like a swelling of the eye. So you can see that one there. You can see that. Then we've got bigger nubbin just developing there. You can see that there. And then these nubbins elongate and become a bit pointier and they start to look a bit more like this. So you can see they get a little bit more of a pointed tip and they become longer. Then you'll notice as they grow, they're quite sheathy, they've got lots of layers, but from the tip, as it grows, you'll start to notice a terminal leaf forming. So you can see down here, it's just beginning to split into its leaves there, beginning to leaf out a bit. And eventually they extend and they bring out their leaves. Now as the canes are maturing, you may notice um, that you have a second leaf developing, as this one, or this is also when you might develop a sheath. And then finally, the cane will sort of reach its maximum growth and then it'll start to plump up its pseudobulb. This outer sheath will remain as the pseudobulb starts to plump up and eventually it will just dry and wither off. So you, you can leave it, um, but I often like to peel these old sheaths back because bugs can hide around there. Now at any stage of this process, roots will start to develop. Sometimes they start when the new growth is just an inch or two long. Um, sometimes they'll start halfway through the process of developing the cane. Sometimes when the cane is just mature, but sometimes they won't develop roots until actually after the flowering is done. So each individual differs um, when they develop their roots, but you'll start to notice a trend with each individual plant. Um, so this is important because the best time to repot is probably when your new roots are beginning to develop. Um, and you know, if your if your plant develops new roots after flowering, it's probably not the best idea to repot when a cane is halfway mature. So just keep an eye on your plant, make a note of when these roots are developing, and that's usually a good time to repot your orchid. Now about the flowers themselves, unfortunately I don't have a lot of cat layers in bloom at the moment. Um, I've got two in total to show you, but I do have a few photos um, which I'll put up. Um, so cat layer flowers are extremely variable to say the least. So you can get huge blooms um, and it's these sort of blousier sort of blooms that tend to be the most fragrant um, but you'll also notice that they've got slightly thinner substance to them um, they tend to mark a bit more easily and in general these thinner substance petals they tend to only last around the three week mark um, but as I mentioned you can get huge varieties of these um, and they tend to be so fragrant some of them can really just fill a whole room and it can be quite spectacular um, and the fragrances themselves can be very complex it can range from just a floral sort of scent to citrusy fruity notes um, this one in particular at the moment is extremely fragrant just one flower and I can smell it from about two feet away um, and if there's a breeze it just wafts over to the other side of the room it's really quite magnificent 
once the intergenerics come into play, there's just so many different types of blooms. Um, and you can get blooms that are smaller, more clustered, you can get waxier blooms, spotted blooms. Um, so all of these flowers do tend to last a little bit longer than your huge blousey sort of type fluffy flowers. Um, but they also don't tend to be as fragrant I find. Um, but you know there's obviously variations in all of those and yeah once you do start getting the intergenerics your possibilities for size, colour, shape, fragrance they're practically endless and so really there's a flower for everybody in the Cattleya Alliance. So I'll wrap things up here for today. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this little chat about Cattleya's and their growth. As I said before I'm going to do another video one of these days about how I look after them and some general culture tips. Um, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up um, and subscribe to my channel down below uh, and I hope you guys all have a great week. Happy growing until I see you next time. Bye!